The link in the description is only there to see the source material. Do not under any circumstance go to these people with the intent to be a dick. I don't support witch hunts or lynch mobbing, so don't be either. As for the subjects themselves, my video is for the purposes of criticism and entertainment. Take it or leave it. My content is not here to start drama. Please do not treat it like it is. I have a story connected to my content for myself and my audience. If you're new to this and are interested, I'll link to a playlist containing the story thus far down below. Otherwise, skip to the timestamp on the screen to skip to the thing you clicked the video for. Alright, hope you enjoy. <sighs> Maybe it's due to the fact we're trapped in these boxes, but I feel like going to bed. Well, it's not like we're getting out of here anytime soon. Feel free to hit the hay. Yeah, alright. Could she be any more useless? Hey now, we don't talk that way about our higher-ups. Valerie trying her best just so happens the situation we're in isn't what she's equipped for. Please, I'd rather Ginger or Z come to save us over that hack. I want no more of that out of you. We also got ourselves caught, if you remember, so you can't just be getting on a Val's case for that. She is right, though. Out of all the admins, I've always been the least useful. Hell, it was because of my mess-up that we're even in this position. Hey, hey. Val gets messed up all the time. Don't blame yourself. Little didn't have to open it. That's a federal offense in some dimensions. Do you even know what was in that letter, Val? Not a clue. I just remember Skylar wanted me to send a letter to Ginger, and Little wound up getting her hands on it. She read it, and, well, here we are. Well then, don't you worry about it. Maybe it was something in that letter that set Little off. This video talks about some controversial and potentially triggering topics. Viewer discretion is advised. I told you I'd get back to you after I got done watching this, however, considering how much there is to talk about, I guess we're doing it in this form. So Blaze the Movie Fan made a video talking about his least favorite videos of last year and threw it on BitChute, then came to me asking for feedback and my own two cents on his video. That's really the extent of the context of the important. The context of individual videos are down in the description, though we're most likely going to be calling back to every video as is anyway, so... Let's begin. Number 9. Cartoons in real life by Smosh. What happens when you stop watching a YouTube channel completely and then come back to it at least five years later? Well, you are fucking confused. And that's exactly what I was. It's clear that I and Anthony aren't on the Smosh team anymore. I mean, I already know that one of these of the duo left Smosh already a long time ago. But apparently both of them have left because I see neither of them in a skit video that was uploaded last year. Bro, Ian Hecox is literally in the thumbnail of the video you're talking about that you have on screen. See? That's, that's him as Rick. He's also in a few of the skits within this video, primarily the Scooby-Doo skit as the detective, Rick and Morty as Rick, TMNT skit as the Shredder, and the Steven Universe skit as Greg. So, he's still in Smosh, though since it's become such a corporation instead of two dudes in their bedroom, obviously they have other hired help to go along with him, so it's not just the Ian Hecox show. Who the hell even are those people? I don't recognize a single motherfucker who was in that skit video. I mean, they have credits. Oh hey look, Ian's in there too. I'm a bomb! Number 8! Top 10 worst? Episode of SpongeBob SquarePants by the Mysterious Mr. Enter. Oh my god, Enter. Why do you always find new ways to screw up? You know, I already gave up on you as I was convinced that your content would never get any better. And sadly, I was right. If it wasn't for the rule that I don't include videos to the list where I did video thoughts episodes on, two of your videos would be on this list. My god, Enter. What I said previously still stands. You honestly should just fucking quit. You clearly don't even care anymore, and you have admitted that you don't make reviews for fun anymore, but instead because it's your job. Honestly, just fucking quit. It's not worth it anymore. And just like that, this video goes from, eh, not amazing, to, what the hell, Blaze? This is incredibly destructive of you to say. For starters, and this is the smaller issue that I take with this sentiment, you don't prove that Enter doesn't find any enjoyment out of doing reviews anymore, so ultimately we just have to take your word, which is never ideal. But more pressingly, I take issue with the fact that you're telling him to 
quit his job and fire the people who are working for him all on the basis that you think it's not worth it anymore, to which, ugh, you are not inter. You don't get to tell him what is and isn't worth it. If this is a stable job that pays well for him, then he should be allowed to do it even if it doesn't always bring him joy. Plus again, he's got editors working for him. These people he's paying would also lose a source of revenue. So in turn, him quitting on a dime like that not only would hurt his own income, but the incomes of those who he's hired. Furthermore, as stated before, this whole sentiment is destructive as hell out the gate. We haven't even gotten into what your problems with this video are, and you're already telling the number 8 segment of your video to just stop making content. Like, I genuinely don't know how to react to that. What the fuck? I am saying this because I'm genuinely concerned about you. You just effectively called him a lost cause friend, saying that you gave up on him. With a statement like that, forgive me for being a bit skeptical of how much you actually care for him. But anyway, the problem with this video is that it's redundant as fuck. I mean seriously, all it does throughout it is three harsh points that he already said about Spongebob Squarepants. Now not all the episodes on the list are episodes which he has already reviewed. But here's the problem, even when he talks about episodes he hasn't talked about in a previous video, he says the exact same fucking shit he said about previous episodes. There's literally nothing new here. You know, I'm just going to ignore the unfortunate wording of Blay saying there's nothing new here while simultaneously acknowledging that not every episode that made Inter's list was one he'd previously reviewed, because admittedly that'd be rather nitpicky, and plus, I guess one could make the argument that Inter wound up rehashing similar complaints throughout those very same episodes, so instead I'll focus on the other issues. First, while yes, a lot of these episodes were ones he had reviewed in the past, I want to point out the time frame of when the last time Inter talked about any of the episodes on his list were. The Splinter was last talked about in 2015. Choir Boys was a year prior to that. A Pal for Gary was a year before that. Demolition Doofus was last reviewed in 2014. SpongeBob You're Fired was reviewed in 2013. Truth or Square was 2014. One Course Meal? 2015, and that, like the Splinter, was a re-review, and Pet Sitter Pat was also re-reviewed in 2015. So even if everything he listed were ones he had already talked about in the past, which, yeah, 8 out of 10 were, this list is a more up-to-date opinion on these episodes, a look back, if you will, or a retrospective on what he currently thinks about all of these episodes that were previously discussed. Opinions can and do change in six years, Blaze, and even if they don't totally make a 180, they can still be better refined to show growth of a creator's skill in a medium. It's why so many other countdown creators will eventually return to similar talking points after years of opinion forming. So it's not exactly like this list is redundant in that department. On that note, I think we should acknowledge the point of Enter's list, because, yeah, him talking about all these episodes again is kind of the point. Bad Spongebob episodes weren't just mediocre, like a lot of other shows that had gone on too long. They could be genuinely shocking, gross, or cruel. Only rarely were they funny. And the show's reputation sunk so deep that no one cared when a random internet idiot looked way too deep into episodes like The Card or Breath of Fresh Squidward. Seeing things that just weren't there. Like, I'm not making this shit up. People actually did that, and nobody believes me when I tell them. What I'm trying to say is that in my eight years on this platform, I've grown. And I've come to regret a lot of my past decisions with this show specifically. SpongeBob has grown a lot too in the past decade. And while it does have an uncertain future with the passing of Steven Hillenburg and these spin-offs that aren't off to a good start, it's worth noting that this show has managed to do the impossible. SpongeBob was dead, a has-been to many people for years and years. Back when I started Started this thing. And while it has been a bumpy road still here and there, the show managed to get back on the saddle and impress many again with episodes like Mimic Madness, Karen's Virus, and SpongeBob's Birthday Bash, all of which we'll probably talk about in the other list. In the past, I would have been super eager to do this list at the earliest possible opportunity. Now I do it with a heavy heart. Let's take this list to remember how far we've come. This is the top 10 worst SpongeBob SquarePants episodes as of season 12. He wishes to show how much he has grown since the time starting his review. Looking back on his previous reviews is the cringe that others see them as. And honestly, ouch, boy do I relate. So this is ultimately him going back over these episodes with a fresher and older pair of eyes that could come to a better opinion than the ones that read too deep into things like he said he used to do. Now, sure, you might not have to like that aspect of his video. You're free to whatever subjective viewpoint you take about that. 
but to call his rehashing a main problem with the video, when it is in essence the point of the video, is I think maybe missing what the video was trying to do. Now back in 2030 when he did list videos, he had a rule of not including episodes on the list he has already reviewed. And you know, he had a damn good reason for that. It was to avoid his lists from being redundant, which he did successfully. Unfortunately, this video is the prime example of why a rule like that is really fucking needed. Eh, is it really needed though? Like, everyone has their own goals when it comes to countdown creation. Like, while I'm not normally one to make a habit of using myself as an example, in both my 2017 bullshit levels list and worst Gex channels list, I rant on about the space channel and how fucking bullshit it is, and I fully intend to do that again when I wind up remaking those lists. I don't care if I wind up rehashing shit because not everyone is going to watch all of my content. Sometimes it's easier to call back to your older work, but there shouldn't be an expectation to never talk about something a second time if it so winds up being needed. Also, if I were to be really petty, I could bring up your comment on my worst videos I covered list in which I had a similar premise to Enter Zone, but this was roughly five years ago, so I don't really feel like it's needed. The point is, you don't really need a rule explicitly excluding repeated entries. You can if you want, but that shouldn't be a requirement. And I also must say, I find it ironic as fuck that the mysterious Mr. Enter said that he didn't have much to say about the Splinter as he already talked about it so many times. Well, you have talked about several episodes on the list several times too, but he didn't have a problem with rehearsing what you already said about those episodes in the past. Yeah, that statement is just ironic as fuck since he was trying to avoid exactly what he was fucking doing for the rest of the video. Not really, because Enter didn't say what you seem to think he said. In reality, his statement was... Is it a horror episode? No. Then why is it so gross? Is it a comedy? No, it's not funny. Is it a story? No, because there is none. I could say more, but let's be honest, you've all heard everything that could be said about this episode. My series started as infamous animation because the splinter was already well talked about by the time I started. So to spare you and me from having to try and pretend I have something new to say about this one, let's move on. Which is to say that the splinter was an incredibly infamous episode even prior to him talking about it initially. Yes, he did prior to this statement bring up that he had also previously talked about the episode five times, but you're conflating the two sentences that are detached from one another to make a snipe gotcha remark at something that Inter didn't say. I suppose one could make the argument that everything he talked about in each of these entries were also talked about to death by other users, I guess? But not only are you not doing that, but even if you were, considering how infamous bad Spongebob Squarepants episodes are, to have one that was as infamous as the Splinter from the gate, it's kind of a weak gotcha at best. Also, also, he wasn't trying to do that. Like, he does still bring up the issues with the episode. Just because he caps off the entry with a, you've all heard this before, doesn't mean he was actively avoiding it. Black. Oh, and there's one point in particular that really bothers me. Let's address it. Demolition Doofus is actually a real episode that was really made and really put on television. And if you're wondering, no, this isn't just me looking too deep into things. This episode is literally about Mrs. Puff literally trying to get Spongebob killed in a demolition derby. Why are you still <laughs> Literally. They make this abundantly obvious. could finally be rid of Spongebob forever. <laughs> but there is no other way that you can interpret this. Now I understand why you are saying this. You regret overreacting in the past and want to make up for it. But to tell the truth, you didn't overreact in your original review of that episode at all. Uh, what? How did you manage to pull that straw man from Inter clarifying that he wasn't reading too deep into things? In fact, if you want to make a point about how rehashed this list was, that right there is a pretty good example, because he literally does the exact same clarification within his initial 2014 review. But if Mrs. Puff was all casted up, she wouldn't be able to try and get Spongebob killed. Oh yeah, I'm not kidding. Mrs. Puff tries to get Spongebob killed. They see some people being rushed into the hospital. These are the casualties, also known as the dead people who aren't dead, from the latest demolition derby. Even all beat up, they're still trying to crash into each other. And the doctor is happy that they're risking their life for others' amusement. Risking their lives for our amusement? I could finally be rid of SpongeBob. Well, maybe she only means that I'll be too injured to ever drive a boat again. She couldn't possibly mean... 
<laughs> and I mean that in the worst possible way. <laughs> okay, now Mrs. Puff gets creepy. What this is doing is trying to clarify where he got this idea that Mrs. Puff wanted SpongeBob dead by playing a clip where she flat out says she does. Inter is re-clarifying that, I assume for those who didn't watch his backlog. He's not making a different point here, he's not making a different statement. Hell, arguably, he's not even policing his tone for this to try to come across as more civil than he did in his initial review, so I'm not sure where you got this point from. Your anchor in that video was completely justified. Demolition 2 first is a legitimately bad episode, and you had every right to get angry. And I also find it funny that you reflect on your past and regret overreacting. When that hasn't changed at all, you still overreact massively, even in reviews you make nowadays. Hell, that was one of the biggest problems with your review of F the season of Samurai Jack. The amount of times you overreacted in that video was ridiculous. Evidence? What's that? Like you're willing to show a clip to argue a point that didn't exist, but when calling to another video entirely, you don't play anything. Which, spoilers, happens throughout the rest of this video. See, when it comes to my worst of the years, I make sure that I play a clip that in some way will tie into what I'm saying. I think it's important to be able to show your audience what you're referring to. You're a presenter. Present. Or at the very least, give us an example of where in the video you could be alluding to. The worst part is, considering the video you're talking about, I'd be willing to believe he was overreactionary. The four hot take reviews he did towards the end of the year were incredibly antagonistic at the best of times, and it was also abundantly unnecessary as it just seemed like he wanted to piss people off. See, as an example, the very end of the Samurai Jack review where he goes on this smarmy, oh no guys, I'm gonna get a lot of hate for my Rise of TMNT review. Speaking of tedious, next time it's Rise of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. So hey, if me saying Jack Season 5 suck gets you down, don't worry, karma's coming my way, because it's gonna be a hellstorm when that video goes up. It was a terrible time to be subscribed to Enter. So, how the hell did you exactly act different in that review than you did in your old reviews? You really fucking didn't. So that about you hasn't changed, and I would argue that the overreaction in that review is far less justified and your overreaction and your reviews of bad SpongeBob episodes. Because at least there, there is a legit reason to get upset. But with Samurai Jack Season 5, look, you are all love to hate it, but it's still ridiculous how much you overreacted in that review. I'm not sure what kind of double standard you're shoving to the forefront for us, Blaze, but I don't think I like it much. So it's okay for Inter to get upset at SpongeBob because, quote, there are things to legit get upset over. But for some reason, it's not the same for Samurai Jack. You don't really explain what the difference is between the two either, so I'm kind of just left assuming that it's because you find yourself subjectively disagreeing with the Samurai Jack review over the bad Spongebob episodes. Whether or not that's actually the case, I don't know, because you do jack all to elaborate on the point. Either way, if it's okay for him to react to one, to say it's then not okay to overreact to the other is just double standards for the sake of it. At the end of the day, he's still reacting disproportionately to cartoons. And if I didn't have the rule that I don't put videos on this list I already talked about in previous videos, that video would be on the list for sure. In fact, it would be even higher up on the list than this video is. But yeah, I have that fucking rule to avoid being redundant. Speaking of redundant, that is the biggest problem with this video. I'm convinced at this point that the mysterious Mr. Hunter has completely forgotten about what made his reviews back 2013 till 14 so fucking great. He has legitimately forgotten why he was a great reviewer back then, and he isn't very good now. And that's beyond said. As someone who was said to have lost my edge after 2017, I kinda fucking hate this comment. Because it insinuates that there should just never be any personal growth of a creator, else they lose what made them supposedly good in their heyday. Inter doesn't agree that he was a good reviewer back then. He constantly makes shots at his younger self for being a bad reviewer. Six. There is a ton I could choose from, though. Everything from Cephalopod Lodge, to Giant Squidward, to Squid's Visit, or maybe I can even pull one of the later episodes, like Squid Baby, or Little Yellow Book, or Patrick the Game. Or I could pick Smooth Jazz and Bikini Bottom, or Boat Smarts, or literally a dozen other episodes. 
Like, even if you don't mind these kind of episodes, at some point when the list gets so long, you gotta realize that maybe this trail is getting a little overworn and you should try something a bit more creative. There's just so many selections that I can't pick. I'm, I'm gonna look up and see what other people have said. Oh hey, maybe this guy can help me figure this one out. Bit dramatic calling them torture porns. We're not like doing Saw here, thankfully. But let me see what you got. Some viewers may find this disturbing. Your discretion is advised. One eternity later. This man is an idiot and you shouldn't listen to a damn thing that he says. Breath of Fresh Squidward, really. Yeah, it's not a good episode, but wow, this guy is looking way too deep into shit. So whatever vague attribute you're alluding to as the reason he was a great reviewer back then, because lord knows you don't explain that either, Enter himself obviously doesn't agree. Now, that's not to say that he couldn't have developed bad habits in his reviews or has diminished in quality as far as being a creator has gone. He absolutely could have. But you don't explain what he has changed negatively about himself. At worst, you brought up that he rehashes old points in one video and he still overreacts to things, which you've attributed to something that he did in his heyday of 2014 with his initial demolition doofus review. And this is evidence for the fact that he thinks that he actually got better. I'm sorry, the fact that he thinks you improved since then is a fucking joke. Shut the fuck up, Blaze. Holy crap, this is destructive. Yes, Inter thinks he's gotten better from his problematic behaviors of old. It's almost like he explains how within the video. For instance, as I've already played, one of the common things he keeps bringing up is how he felt he read too deep into things. Within the video we're talking about, he doesn't do that. Or if he does, you certainly haven't talked about that. He doesn't derail on pointless side tangents that have nothing to do with the review anymore. Or again, if he did, you haven't brought that up. The worst you have brought to the table is something that you've also attributed to his supposed golden years, so at best this comes across as you belittling a guy because he's changed at all. By the way, I am not laughing. When I say it's a fucking joke, I mean a bad joke. A very bad joke. A painfully unfunny joke. You haven't improved at all since 2013-14. In fact, the exact opposite has happened. And like I said by the beginning of this entry, please, for the love of God, just fucking quit. Cartoons clearly aren't your passion anymore. You truly are wasting your time, man. And I'm saying this because I'm concerned about you. And then Blaze wraps up this entry with a rehash of his horribly destructive mentality at Enter's expense. I'm not happy. And this is only number eight. Number eight! Number seven. <laughs> Didn't think to edit that one out. I've come to make an announcement! Dark Matter is a bitch ass motherfucker! Now, I know fucking nothing about the guy that fellow Porsche responded to. Hell, I know nothing about Ben Shapiro either. I've heard about him for sure, but I've never seen any of his videos. Now, my biggest issue with the video is that fellow Porsche is defending discrimination. Now, he believes that business owners should have the right to discriminate. I'm sorry, I don't agree with it at all. You don't have the right to deny services to someone because they happen to be black or homosexual. That is a discrimination and you deserve to get in legal trouble for it. <sighs> okay, so... God, I'm not ready to get political. Alright, so let's talk about this. So basically the idea that Philosopossum is putting into the forefront in his video is this notion that people have a right to their beliefs, regardless of how much he agrees with said beliefs. Probably even argue that there's some kind of um, specific, you know, belief that you have in some kind of white supremacy or you don't want to serve black people. Well, here's the thing, buddy. People have right to their beliefs. If someone wants to believe in white supremacy or hold viewpoints that are racist or bigoted, as much as I disagree with those viewpoints, it is their right. This is an idea that coincides with what he calls free association. You could honestly just say, fuck it, I don't want to serve black people. Uh, yeah, people have a right to decide who they do and don't want to do business with. It's called free association. If someone decides that they don't want to serve white people or black people or whomever, they don't have to. I think we could agree that that's kind of a dick move, but it is their right. Which, if you ask me, I don't think free association is what he thinks it is, because free association is a psychological theory intended to help a patient come to grips with their true feelings on a subject matter and has nothing to do with one's freedom to discriminate. He probably meant the First Amendment's protection of free speech assembly and petition, which would protect one's freedom of association, but whatever, not the point. The point is that he believes people should have a right to not associate with whomever they please. 
which would therein protect one's right to bigoted ideals, such as not allowing service to a person based on race or sexual orientation. It's supporting one's right to free speech. And I know we haven't gotten to that point in the video yet, but keep that one on the table for now, because it'll be important later. As for this notion that businesses don't have the right to deny service discriminatorily, that's actually not the case here in America. Well, not fully, at least. Some places it is, but there's actually a lot more states than not that don't have anti-discrimination laws. So, no blaze. Legally, they can. In my opinion, it sucks to be put in that situation, but they do have that right. Now don't get me wrong, I'm a strong fighter for freedom of speech, but I honestly think that freedom of speech has its limits, and using it as an excuse to be discriminatory is going way too far. I'm also keeping this one on the table for later too. If you're a business owner, you don't have the right to deny services based solely on characteristics people can't help. Now, Philip Possum said in the video that's not what the baker was doing, but instead he was refusing to bake a cake for a gay wedding. I'm sorry, but if you run a bakery or any business at all, your own personal preferences don't matter in the slightest. Your fucking job is to do service and make exactly what the customers want unless the shop doesn't offer that item. But if you can make it or have it in stock, you are fucking obligated to do it. Your personal disagreements on homosexuality doesn't give you the right to refuse to make a cake for a gay wedding. All right. There's a lot to unpack here as well, so let's go over it all one by one. You don't have the right to discriminate based on things people can't control. Except you do legally, in 29 states. If you run a bakery, then your preferences don't matter in the slightest. Your job is to make what the customer orders unless you don't have that item in stock. Well, couldn't one make the argument that the bakery in question and any subsequent other hypothetical ones don't sell gay wedding cakes to begin with? Like, Philosopossum brings up that the specific one in question didn't, but would have been willing to sell the couple a different item had they asked for it. So right off the bat, just looking at the title of the video, it's very clear that this guy doesn't actually understand the details of the issue here. The title of the video is Ben Shapiro, Let Bakers Discriminate Against Gay People. That's not really what's at issue here. The issue isn't whether or not bakers should be allowed to discriminate against gay people, it's whether or not bakers should be forced to make cakes for same-sex weddings. Recall that Jack Phillips never said he was refusing service to the couple because they're gay. He simply doesn't serve cakes for same-sex weddings. Phillips made it clear that he was willing to serve the couple any other product in the store. So yeah, right out of the gate, this guy doesn't understand what's actually at issue. But even if the bakery in question was discriminating based on the notion that the couple was gay, then we could talk about what it is that the bakery sold, to which gay wedding cakes isn't on the menu. The gay couple could have gone to another bakery, a notion that both Philosopossum and even Ben Shapiro himself brings up. Philosopossum even goes a step further to give an example of how the business in question is hurting themselves not selling the item. Um, you're walking around in a shopping center, there's a bakery, and now you have to identify that as the homophobic, um, anti-gay bakery. Uh, correct. So what you would then do in that situation is identify that bakery as the homophobic, anti-gay bakery and go to a different bakery. It's that simple. Bakeries that discriminate will lose money and be outcompeted by other bakeries that don't. That's how discrimination is dealt with in a free market. Which I know you're about to argue against here in a second, and I'll bring up my counter-argument to that there, but... At the end of the day, you even bring up the stipulation that if they don't sell an item, then that would be the time it's okay to deny service. Anti-gay wedding bakeries don't sell wedding cakes for gay weddings. Them's the breaks. God, I cannot believe I'm arguing in favor of Ben Shapiro. This sucks. Anyway, as a business, you're obligated to make a cake for a gay wedding. Well, Philosopossum actually argues against the sentiment in his video, so I'm just gonna let him speak for himself. Colorado state law says that um, you can't discriminate, which is great, that's how it should be. Alright, so you very clearly don't believe in free association. So let me ask you this. Should customers be allowed to discriminate? Should customers be allowed to decide that they don't want to shop at businesses that are owned by black people or gay people or whatever? Or should those business owners be allowed to force you to shop at their business? Why is it legitimate for the consumer to compel commerce because of their membership in a particular class, but not the producer? Because a lot of the arguments you could make to justify compelled commerce on the consumer end would also equally work on the producer end. Ah, 
And honestly, I have a very hard time buying that people will run out of business if they are discriminatory. I'm sorry, I don't believe that at all. Because there are many discriminatory people in the world who don't care about the discrimination policies and are going to shop there regardless. And they would even shop there if they disagree with the discrimination policies so as they think that the place sells good fucking items. I doubt that being discriminatory makes it more likely that a place will run out of business. Please, this is standard economics. If you don't sell something that's in demand and your competition does, there is more of a chance that you're going to lose business to your competition. Like, no, obviously not everyone will stop shopping at Bigot's Bakery, trademark, but with enough of a demand without a met supply, you will start losing money. That's just basic business. Just bullshit away. Number six! Sonic Seattle's response to rat barrage. Now to be fair, Sonic Seattle has contacted me personally and told me himself that he has regrets for making this video. And you know, I applaud him for that. I respect that he realizes how bad the video is. However, it's still a video that happens to be one of the worst videos of 2021, so I still have to talk about it. What bothers me the most about this video is how needlessly angry Sonic Shadow got over civil criticism. And that's all Rat Baggage's video was. There was literally nothing about it that warrants so much fucking anger. Do I bring up how Oswald was actually way more civil in his video than Blaze insinuates with Oswald only peeking his mic sometimes instead of all the time like he did with someone like me? Or do I bring up the unfortunate hypocrisy of this Mr. Intersegment? Decisions, decisions. Now I'm not saying that you can't disagree. You have every right to. But getting so fucking angry over the video is just ridiculous. Seriously, I can clearly tell that Rat Barrett was only trying to help the guy. I have nothing in the video but civil respectful criticism. I can never fucking understand why you got so needlessly angry in the video. Yo, like, can we see what you're talking about? Like I said, having gone through Oswald's video again for this commentary, there's a couple possibilities as to where you might be insinuating. Maybe? Like, there was his final thoughts, his side tirade about the dead space in his intro. I could maybe make an argument about his distaste for the title of the video and the singular point about him comparing Among Us to the Sonic the Hedgehog series, but again, out of every video of Oswald's that you could have picked from for this list, you picked the arguably nicer one. Mind you, this is also coming from someone who put this exact same video on her worst commentaries of the year, but my reasons were mostly focused on Oswald's dismissal and excuses at Rat Barrage's critiques over any sense of anger. Now another problem to bring up is that when Sonic Seattle called criticizing the intro nitpicking. I'm sorry, but when you upload something online, which includes a video intro by the way, people have every damn right to criticize it. Blaze, you literally got done effectively saying that Rat Barrage's point was ultimately a nitpick. Come on now. Furthermore, the crux of Oswald's point was to question why Rat Barrage would even bring up the intro as a point of critique when it is a small point. Okay, I have a few things about this intro that I want to say. First of all, the music jumps near the start for seemingly no reason. Secondly, the intro starts in full resolution, but for the rest of the video, there are lovely black bars on the sides of the screen if the Among Us logo isn't being shown. Thirdly, the music that is used loops and drones and with the same lyrics for most of it, leading to the music used being rather grating to listen to for too long. And given that this part of the intro is 20 seconds, it does get repetitive and irritating. Finally, there is 5 seconds of dead audio that adds nothing to the video at all. For an intro that takes 25 seconds, I hope there would be more to it than this, but whatever. Okay, to me, bitching about the intro, about Bill having no audio in the intro picture, that adds nothing to the video at all, is a petty and stupid complaint. For God's sakes, it's just an intro. It's like constantly bitching about a stupid logo all the damn time. Also, I love how you said that there is 5 seconds of dead audio that adds nothing to the video, as if there was supposed to be any audio in there at all. The intro does not have to add anything to the video. It's just my channel intro that can be used for any video on my channel. It's not even that important to the video itself, so why complain about it? Yeah, it's dismissive beyond belief, as Rat Barrage was bringing up the critique as a point against his production. And yes, you are correct to say that Rat Barrage does have the right to critique said production, but let's not misconstrue why Oswald is bringing up this counter-argument to begin with. Although I will agree that an intro doesn't merge much in the long run, it's still part of the fucking video, so people still have the right 
to criticize it. And hell, he wasn't even saying that the intro damaged the video or anything like that. He was just talking about how your intro was poorly done. And no, it's not a nitpick. Having an intro that actually looks pleasing is important. I grant you it's not as important as the point, but it is important regardless. Blaze says that critiquing an intro isn't important in the long run before turning around to say critiquing an intro is important. GG. But even if we were to sit here and say that critiquing an intro is important, why? It's obvious Oswald disagrees with that notion, so you just saying that it is doesn't really do much in the form of argumentation, especially when you consider the aforementioned arguments his main stance. Oh, I be racist. <sighs> Racism is small dick energy. <laughs> Number five. It's always about race by Ted Supo 57. Now, I'm gonna level with you, Ted Supo. I know I'll officially fucking regret ever supporting you. I mean, sure, your gear talk videos are fine. In fact, I still like them. But that doesn't excuse those horrible political videos that you make. And this one is definitely one of your absolute worst. The main problem with this video is that it's nonsensical rambling about racism. And honestly, you should be ashamed of yourself for slandering the whole country of the United States as racist. <clears throat> I want to point out to my audience that Blaze is not American. If I recall correctly, he's Icelandic. So this is going to be an interesting discussion, to say the least. Your point that America was built on racism is complete horseshit. Now look, it is true that in the past, racism was common and socially accepted. But your point that it still is, even to this day, is both fucking wrong and disgusting. Uh... I hate to break it to you, Blaze, but it's not. Let's go over some examples, shall we? Texas Governor Greg Abbott just last year signed a bill that aimed to ban discussions of critical race theory, which became a law in December. In 2020, former President Donald Trump did something similar to federal trainers calling the topic propaganda. These two aren't the only ones doing that, by the by. In fact, Brookings.edu pointed out how a total of nine states have individually passed these legislations, with 20 additional ones planning to try as well. There's also a Vanity Fair article that details Florida's attempts to do so just earlier this year, with Indiana's bill about banning divisive concepts in the classroom, and Texas wanting to teach an opposing side to the Holocaust being honorable mentions. To go a bit further, I asked some people who would know about this stuff better than I ever could, and not only was I swarmed with answers and I couldn't keep up with all of them, but in particular, some highlights included the rise of racist groups like the Proud Boys and the Oath Keepers, George Floyd, which, like the example or no, the stories surrounding that heavily talked about race with him, and then you could probably also bring up the fact that talking about anti-racial ideals only ever really happens in America when a black person dies, but that might just be a personal thing. There were the COVID hate crimes surrounding Asian Americans. There's the fact that the Civil Rights Act and voting rights only passed within the last 100 years and both have been fought against even as late as last year. I can bring up how in 2020 there was a TikTok trend to attack Jewish people. Or alternatively, I could bring up the blackface hype house. And the less said about the white vimper joke turned whitewashing racist counter movement, the better. Mind you, these are only a few examples. I couldn't keep up with all of the ones that were given to me, but the fact that I was given so many to begin with should tell you, you're wrong. Yes, racism was common back in the day, but guess what? Nobody leaving today even remotely fucking approves of that. Consider Candace Owens. I mean, sure, there are a few people who openly support the racism of the past, but it's such a fucking small minority that it's barely not even worth considering. January 6th of 2021 would beg to differ. Seriously, man, do some actual fucking research. And by actual research, I do not mean something that suits your bullshit narrative. Do actual fucking research to find out if what you're saying is actually true. What part of this video is shot down? You can't just say something like that and not give an example because that inherently implies that there was a part of his video that contradicted his narrative. But all you've given us thus far is an incorrect notion about there being no racism in modern America. Tetsubo even starts his video talking about a story that was potentially racially driven about a black woman and her white sister something he also links in the description of his video. You don't do that. Instead, you make unsensical rambling about racism, but you clearly prove that you don't know what the hell you're talking about. It's assholes like you who are keeping racism alive. How? 
by giving examples of how African Americans are treated poorly in America, the mixed families who get questioned by police and parks. We've had people, parents, or their own biological children stopped by police because they were in a park and the kid was lighter skinned than the parent. The people who actively try to fight against the rights of people of color. But in the meantime, some of them are figuring out that they're losing power and they don't like it, which is why they're supporting fascism with the Republican Party, which is why they're supporting the, the fascist troops in the street known as the cops, which is why they're supporting the policies that are disenfranchising black people when it comes to voting, because they are desperate to keep power. They are desperate to keep their privilege because they are afraid if they lose it, they will be oppressed. Because they know how they have been treating black people for 500 years. They are aware of this. The fact that you can call assistance for a person of color only to get them in trouble instead. You can call the cops because a black person needs help. That they are the victim of a crime. And they can end up being arrested or killed. It happens in America. Blaze, your misplaced complacency would be what keeps racism alive in America. It's that kind of attitude of something not existing that disallows change or a problem to be fixed. Like, if I'm to be that person for a second, you're Icelandic. And white. So racism in America isn't something that you would experience in any capacity. How do you intend to speak on behalf of people who do? If you ask a white person if they would like to be treated like we treat black people in America today, and you get an honest answer, they're not a troll, they're not a white nationalist that, 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 that pretend otherwise. If you get an honest answer, they're going to say no. I've seen this done live in, in speaking engagements, where someone got on stage and said that. He said, okay, everyone in the audience that would like to be treated like black people are in America today, raise your hand. Nobody moves. She said, yeah, she said, you know, you don't understand. I want you to raise your hand if you want to be treated like black people are right now in America today. Nobody raised their hand. And she said, so you understand. You know exactly how black people are being treated. On that note, Blaze, if racism doesn't exist in modern America, would you? You know, not for nothing, like, this is a side note to literally everything, but a friendly reminder to those watching this that my introduction to commentaries was as an anti-SJW whose first commentary supported Gamergate. How the tides can shift. And I'm still not over how you said in your video about taking down statues. The statues of white people should be replaced by statues of black people. I'm sorry, you have no room to accuse anyone of being racist when you make a comment like that. Because that comment is objectively fucking racist. So I was a tad confused by this statement in particular and went to go searching for what Blaze was talking about here. And, uh, Blaze, Tetsubo was talking about confederate statues. Greetings, YouTube. So, I've been thinking about the statues. <clears throat> They're all in the news. Um, some are being taken down by cities. Some of them are being taken down by people. And it has a lot of folks in the conservative sphere, let's say, very upset. In fact, um, the President of the United States is upset about, you know, taking down those statues and things like that because, you know, they're, they represent our heritage. A heritage of racism and slavery and discrimination and oppression which is apparently a, a heritage that he would like to preserve not really shocking there his father was a Klansman um, and I've spoken about these statues before but I want to make it very clear tear down the fucking statues remove every single statue in the United States of America of a person that owned even a single slave or was an officer in the Confederacy or a soldier in the Confederacy. Take them all down. So I don't know how well you know your American history, though I can guess probably not well given what we've seen thus far in this entry, but one of the biggest issues the North and South before the Civil War were heavily divided over 
was the act of slavery, with the Confederate states being pro-slave and the rest of the states at the time fighting against it. Mind you, this is a very simplified telling of this story. I don't really have the energy to go over everything that happened during the Civil War. I'm not that much of a history nerd. But that, more or less, is the gist of it. The Confederacy saw slavery as an integral part of the economy, and it's statues of those who supported that belief that Tetsubo is saying should be torn down. Also, I notice how dishonest your entire summary of his stance is, because you're out here genuinely painting him as a racist when what Tetsubo is saying following tear down statues of racists, by the way, not white people, is put up statues of women or people of color who helped make America what it is today, with his reasoning being that we already have a ton of other statues of white dudes as it is. I'd even go further than removing the statues. I think we should replace all the statues with statues of not white people. So there's a lot of white people already out there. So why don't we put some people, statues up there representing the people in America, say, that existed before we got here. Or the black people, or the brown people, or the Asian people. All who have contributed to making America what it is today. How about we put some statues up to women? There aren't a lot of those. Most of those statues are of dudes, who also happen to be racists and slave owners. Um, and or slave owners. Some of them weren't slave owners. Some of them were just willing to fight and die to just preserve slavery. This isn't the anti-white rhetoric you're making it out to be. This is Tetsubo putting out this belief that we should acknowledge the history of those who weren't white guys who fought in favor of racist ideals, trademark. Don't fucking straw man him. Honestly, it's come to the point where I'm starting to think that you were never that good to begin with. And I was just too blind to see the proper with your videos. You were a good friend of mine back in 2010. And honestly, back then, I did appreciate that. But again, I fucking regret it. You're legitimately a fucking scumbag. Go fuck yourself! The only reason I don't consider you one of the worst YouTubers is because you have a very small following. You might have over 1000 subscribers, but most of your videos don't even get 1000 views. Let me tell you, if you had a much larger audience, I would without a doubt consider you to be one of the worst YouTubers. But you don't, and that's the only fucking reason I don't consider you one of the worst YouTubers. And I am fucking grateful that you don't have a large audience. Because just imagine how fucking dangerous you would be if you did. It would be fucking scary. But you don't, and thank goodness for that. Uh, what do you even say to this? God damn. Number four. Kai Kulinski got this one wrong by the amazing atheist. Alright, there is one big problem that I have with this video which I have to address. You are civil and respectful when you respond to Kyle. Why is that a problem? Because you are a dick towards everyone else which you respond to. Literally everyone else which you respond to in your videos, you're a complete dick. And I don't call them fucking morons and stuff like that. I'm sorry, but that's not acceptable in any way. I'm glad that you are respectful towards Kyle, but being civil and respectful should be the fucking default. You should only be a dick towards someone if they actually fucking deserve it. And I guess revisiting old takes on Spongebob and acknowledging the fact racism exists are both stipulations to that one. And no, the fact that you disagree with someone on politics or entertainment doesn't count. Then what the flying fuck was that last segment? Speaking of which, I also fucking hate how you are a dick towards people over disagreements or subjective things like movies. Your opinions on movies are not facts. So you have no fucking right to bash someone simply because they like something you hate or vice versa. That is not fucking acceptable in any way. Okay, so I've put into this a few times this video, but please, why does any of this matter? Especially since you don't give us any context to what you are talking about regarding these other unrelated videos that, being honest, I can't even trust said what you say they said because you don't give context to Jack and all. It's worse here because I think I know what you might be alluding to given your top 15 worst YouTubers list. One big problem that I have with him is that he doesn't understand subjectivity at all. At one point he said that all people who love the Star Wars prequels need to be sent to a mental asylum. But even then it's still pointlessly vague because TJ has very frequently talked about Star Wars and I'm not not about to hunt for a point that might not even fucking exist, much less was any more recent than two years ago. Also, also, as an aside, can I go back to the intersegment real quick? 
Because now we're here at the Amazing Atheist, and God, this segment becomes hypocritical when you think that far back. Just a question, Blaze. Why is it suddenly okay for you to talk about how much of a dick TJ is for a second time in like a month with your top 15 worst YouTubers list, but not okay for Inter to have talked about a SpongeBob episode for a second time in six years? The biggest problem that I have with him is that he is a dick to everyone he responds to. He calls everyone who disagrees with a fucking moron, regardless of what they say. Which is fucking pathetic for a guy who is older than me. Yeah, still not over that by the way. Possibly one of the pettiest reasons I've heard someone go off on another YouTuber up there with calling a video a gremlin's wisdom. So yeah, it is cool that you are respectful to Kyle, but you should have the common fucking courtesy to be that way to everyone that you respond to. Not just Kyle because you happen to like him. Whether you like a user or not is irrelevant. Being civil and respectful should be the fucking default. Now if only you could practice what you preach. Alright, with that out of the way, let's discuss the arguments. Now, the biggest problem here is that The Amazing Atheist is proving with this video that he's not for freedom of speech at all. And honestly, I don't think he ever was. When he said that he was for freedom of speech, I think he fucking lied about it. People who are for freedom of speech wouldn't want anything people say banned. Except maybe death threats, that's going too far. Ah. Even when it comes to freedom of speech. Now, The Amazing Atheist says in this video, well, there are certain things I want to ban people from saying, but I am still for freedom of speech though since there are some things that I think are alright to say. No TJ, fuck off. If there is anything period you want people to not be allowed to say, you are not for freedom of speech. You can't have it both ways. Either you are for all freedom of speech or none of it. Then you are also not for freedom of speech as much as you think you are, Blaze. Because if we're to go off of this super extremist viewpoint you show here, you've stated that death threats and discrimination should not be protected under freedom of speech, with your exact words being... Now don't get me wrong, I'm a strong fighter for freedom of speech, but I honestly think that freedom of speech has its limits, and using it as an excuse to be discriminatory is going way too far. So if it's all or nothing as you so blatantly put it here, then you're also not in favor of free speech, cut and dry. I mean, unless you'd also concede to the notion that TJ also has his limits and could still be in favor of free speech himself, but then this all or nothing mantra wouldn't work. And you clearly aren't for freedom of speech, which you prove with this video. You say that people should be allowed to say that they don't want to wear masks because it violates freedoms, but then talk about other points that you don't think people should be allowed to say since it's misinformation. Let me ask, how the hell are any of your other examples different from this one? You made a video in 2020 talking about how mask mandates are in tyranny, and you know what? I agree with that. I still think it's one of your best videos. So why say now that people should be allowed to say it? I'm sorry, but saying that mask mandates are unconstitutional is still fucking wrong. And it's about as wrong as the rest of your examples. Alright, so now we're talking about COVID. Goody. So the point Blaze is talking about in the video that's actually on the list went as such. I am very sympathetic to uh, what Kyle is saying here. I consider myself to be a proponent of freedom of speech. However, I believe that people are entitled to their own opinions, not their own facts. If a person wants to say, I don't believe in wearing a mask because it's a violation of my freedom, that is an opinion and I think it should be protected. If a person wants to say masks are not effective at stopping the spread of COVID-19, that's demonstrably a lie and they should not be allowed to knowingly propagate it. If a person says COVID-19 precautions are overly stifling and I would rather take the risks, uh, than conform to these guidelines, that's an opinion and should be protected. If someone wants to say COVID-19 is a hoax, that is a lie, and that should not be allowed. There's no political position that people should be barred from. But whatever your position is, your facts need to be straight and unimpeachable. And if they aren't, they have no place in the discourse. The point that was made in 2020 that Blades alludes to is... This is about the incredibly stupid people who make a concert, like, who act like not wearing the mask is like some stand they're taking against fucking authoritarianism. Like, need I remind you that just a couple of fucking weeks ago, the president said he was gonna, like, sick the army on protesters? That this fucker just signed an executive order that said, like, if you deface a statue, he's gonna put you in prison for 10 years? 
this guy, the same president who fucking told you that um, protests against Israel were no longer allowed on fucking college campuses and shit because it was anti-Semitic. It's anti-Semitic to oppose the state of Israel. Uh, the same guy who said he's going to strengthen up the libel laws so that the press can't write unflattering stories about him. You know, this guy... You all are cheer- this- all these motherfuckers who say that wearing a mask is tyranny, they're almost 99% of them are cheerleaders for that fucking fuck. That stupid orange despotic fucking mongoloid retard that's currently our fucking president. They're all cheerleaders for that guy who's a total tyrant. But then, when like the CDC or something gives them scientifically viable advice about how to contain the spread of a fucking pandemic, they act like it's tyranny! Which, hey, isn't saying that these people are wrong to call it tyranny, but is instead calling these people stupid for being supporters of a tyrant, giving legitimate examples of tyranny from things that Trump actually did at the time of TJ's video to show how hypocritical it is of Trump supporters to act like they take the big stand against tyranny. The closest we get to TJ arguing against the notion that it is tyranny at all is this. So, I uh, retweeted one of these anti-mask patriots on Twitter and said, Americans are stupid. And someone said to me, well, you know, why don't you move somewhere else then? Basically gave me the old, if you don't love it, leave it fucking line. Hey, here's a better idea. Why don't you leave? Why don't all you guys leave? Because you know what? I'm not the one stupiding up the place, all right? I'm not the one going around being a fucking moron and, like, ignoring valid health advice because I think it's tyranny, okay? You go. All you motherfuckers go and live on Garbage Island where the fuck you belong, and then maybe we can begin to actually take some steps to fix this country. I'll tell you what, you can take Trump with you and he can be president for life. Which isn't exactly arguing the notion as much as it is exhaustively yelling about how tired he is of people like that holding us in the horrid state that we're in. So while obviously he feels the notion to be fucking stupid, he's obviously shown that he feels people do have a right to say it. It's not misinformation to him, it's just dumb. Okay, Boomer, shut the fuck up! Number three, the fact check administration. Should this crack down on misinformation by the amazing atheist? Now I would like to apologize in advance if I get this video mixed up with this response to Kyle. Those two videos are very similar, so it's nearly unavoidable. I mean, if you have a script or notes, it probably wouldn't be. Anyway, there are a lot of problems with the video. The first problem is that the amazing atheist says, While you could argue that what I'm suggesting is tyranny, here's the thing, I do support freedom of speech. It's just that some information should be censored. I still support freedom of speech for other things. No, if you want anything at all censored, you are by definition not for freedom of speech. Because freedom of speech means that you want nothing that's being said censored. I mean, death threats are going too far and that shouldn't be acceptable. But other than that, you either are for freedom of speech or you aren't. If there are certain things you don't want people to be allowed to say, you're not for fucking freedom of speech. He literally said it again. Please, how you say that once and not catch it, I could let it slide. I could justify it as you being careless. You saying it twice and not catch the blatant contradiction in that sentiment though? Now you're just being stupid. Also another problem, you talk about how misinformation should be illegal because it's dangerous so it does cause problems for many people. I'm sorry to say this but if you believe misinformation, it's your own damn fault. If someone tells you something that's blatantly wrong and you believe it, you only have yourself to blame. So now we're victim blaming those who are fed misinformation. Amazing. It doesn't matter if someone is telling you something which you trust or it's a reliable organization. It's your responsibility to think about whether what the person is saying makes sense or is accurate or not and do your own research to find that out. If you believe the misinformation at face value, it's your own damn fault. Nobody should be arrested because they gave you misinformation. It's your responsibility to know that it's misinformation and not trust it. I love this line of logic. 
No, really, it's amusing to see you pretend like everyone who gets fed misinformation should just automatically know it's misinformation. Almost as if, if you're in a spot where you could be fed misinformation, that means you're looking for answers and wouldn't intrinsically know that what you're being told is wrong. Like, ah yes, because it should be on the onus of an untrained general populace to sit down and do all of that scientific lab research on a virus in order to confirm what potentially trustworthy sources are saying. You bring up that one person cannot taste anything anymore because it tastes fucking disgusting. I will admit that does suck, but I'm just saying that maybe if she didn't believe the misinformation, it wouldn't have happened. You heard that right. You catch COVID, it's your fault in accordance with Blaze the Movie Fan. Like, TJ's example of the woman who lost her taste buds wouldn't even be connected to the notion that she didn't believe in COVID protections. It was connected to the mass spreading of the virus from people who don't believe in COVID protections. How many people hear that stuff, and even if they don't fully believe it, are like, oh, I don't know about this vaccine, I'm kind of, hmm, I don't know. Seems like a lot of crazy stuff's being said about it. I'm not sure. And they don't get the vaccine. And then they get it. And then their friend gets it. And then her, their friend's kids get it. And they bring it to school and they give it to other classmates. And then they take it home to their parents and their grandparents. And it spreads and people die and people get sick. And people have permanent damage to their lungs, to their brains. I read a story about a person who got COVID-19 and uh, they lost all their sense of smell and taste and then when it came back, it was wrong and now everything they eat tastes awful. All the stuff they used to love tastes disgusting now. Maybe for the rest of their life. Notice how he doesn't mention the example connected directly to those who disbelieve or are otherwise skeptical of vaccines, but rather as a separate point from the initial statement. And like, a fun fact, Blaze, you can take all the precautions in the world, but that doesn't exempt you from the possibility of catching COVID. You're just lowering the chances not becoming immune. And one asshole is all it takes to spread it around to everyone else. You victim blaming those who catch it regardless of how one may have caught it is a little fucking gross if you ask me. Oh, and you also say it's okay to say you don't like wearing a mask. Just admit that you're an asshole. I'm sorry, TJ, but that is not how we get people to join your side. Nobody likes to be villainized or insulted. Look, I don't agree with those people either. I completely disagree that having to wear a mask is infringement on freedom. But my point still stands. The best way to get people on your side is to be civil. No one is gonna listen to you when you tell them just admit you're an asshole. That should be common fucking sense. I'm getting a little fucking tired of Blaze's constant hypocrisy in this video. I'm not gonna lie. E-N-D-M-Y-L-I-F-E -E. Yeah, this video just proves that when you say it in the past that you are for freedom of speech, you fucking lied. And hell, you're even doing it in this video. The fact that you made three videos that belong on this list, or two if we don't count videos already responded to, is nothing to be proud of. And you really need to improve yourself if you don't but to make it to the next year's list. Unfortunately, I have a feeling that you will, since you are a fucking moron and are too dumb to realize it. Who are you? Like, obviously I'm not asking in the sense of who you are. I've been doing this commentary on you for who knows how long now. But rather in the sense of who you are to TJ. Like, at least when I directly talk about those who make my worst commentaries of the year lists, I know they're people who watch me, and more to the point, I try not to be a condescending cunt about their positioning on whichever list we're talking about. The furthest I got was jokingly requesting DeviantCrow to stop making videos that I would put on the list, but like, that's it. I keep my list predominantly subjective. Meanwhile, you're talking directly to TJ, attempting to threaten him with another position on next year's list if he doesn't change his ways, as if you're some paragon of video quality or some shit. Like, I hate that kind of argument normally, because oftentimes it's accusatory and invalid, but when you straight up say, unless you want a position on next year's list, you're gonna have to get better, I think it's rather applicable. You know, not to think of it, this reminds me of something. Yeah, it reminds me of something that happened back in 2017. For those of you who don't know what I'm talking about, well, Steve Sheffs made a video that talks about how not everybody deserves a public platform. There are some people with bad political ideas that don't deserve it at all and need to be censored at all costs. The amazing atheist 
so it's exactly like Steve Shives in this video. Which is ironic, so it's he used to call Steve Shives out back then too for his supporting of censorship. You know what that proves to be? That proves to be that he wasn't entirely serious when he called out Steve Shives. I'm sure he only did it for the views. He only did it because it was the perfect opportunity to get a lot of views on his channel. The last time TJ talked about Steve Shives was roughly four years ago. Did you know that opinions can change in four years? Me neither. <laughs> Number two, Proud Boys attack Portland by YouTube suspending me so dangerous. Conservatives love the Taliban by Cult of Dusty. Now let me first just say that this is not only talking about this video specifically, although I will be talking about it a lot. But instead, I will also be talking about the issues that I've had with you lately during last year. Which you went on to repeat within your top 15 worst YouTubers list. But it's a bad thing when Inter retreats his opinions. Now first of all, you complaining about YouTube suspending you? So it would be quote too dangerous? It's fucking hilarious. This is coming from the same guy who advocates for people you don't agree with being deplatformed. Now look, I am not saying that I support you getting in trouble. I don't, obviously. I think everybody should have the right to have a platform as long as they aren't sending death threats or sexual predators or any shit like that. I really do think you deserve to be on YouTube because you haven't really broken any of the community guidelines. But it's still very fucking ironic coming from you says you advocate for people being suspended that did nothing wrong. I'm sorry, but that's not acceptable in any way. You don't get to advocate for people who did nothing wrong getting deplatformed. That is fucking unacceptable. Tolerians like you make me fucking sick. Totalitarians like you make me fucking sick. Dude, just because Dusty calls his channel the cult of Dusty doesn't mean he actually wants the government to assert total control over the lives of its citizens. On that same note, you want the law to get involved when someone makes a death threat. Oh yeah, I almost forgot to mention, your entire grasp of freedom of speech is sketchy at best. Because freedom of speech on a very tertiary level is just the ability to speak without government interference. It says that the government may not jail, fine, or impose civil liberty on people or organizations based on what they say or write, except in exceptional circumstances. Not that you're free to say literally anything with no regard to potential consequences. You want Tim Pool and Steven Crowder banned from YouTube for misinformation. I'm sorry, but fuck you. I mean, seriously, fuck you. Now, I'm not gonna say that information is entirely subjective. It isn't, obviously. There are some facts in what's considered accurate information and what isn't. But the problem is, who the hell gets to decide what is misinformation and what's not? Many things you believe are things that many would say is misinformation. So again, who the hell gets to decide that? Really, Blaze? You're going to say this after blaming those who are fed misinformation for believing it? Really? Then how do we do our own research then, Blaze? If anything, trying to get people deplatformed for misinformation is the most fucking dangerous part. Of course getting in trouble was gonna blow in your face. What the hell else did you expect when you advocate for censoring of people who did nothing wrong? Blaze, you're once again strawmanning the point of what was said. Yes, Dusty does put it on YouTube that Tim Pool and Steven Crowder are spreading misinformation about COVID. You need to follow me on Twitch because eventually they're going to ban me on YouTube permanently. And it's not because I do anything wrong. It's because YouTube is now run by fucking bots. We're going to get to that. I guess I won't jump ahead. That's what you guys got to fucking say first. Um, uh, chatty chat. Woohoo! Dusty Live! Hell yeah! Hit the like button, motherfuckers. Do your part. You can't financially support me. You should financially support me. I lost a thousand dollars for my animal sanctuary this week for nothing, for goddamn nothing, because YouTube's run by bots now. Don't mean, don't even matter if you do anything wrong or not. They're just like fuck you. Yet Tim Pool spread misinformation all goddamn day. Fucking uh, Steven Crowder spread goddamn misinformation all goddamn day. Fine, it's fine with YouTube, but me don't do shit wrong. Dusty gotta go for some reason. It sucks. We gotta talk about that. But in this podcast, only does it because YouTube had already banned him for spreading misinformation, citing their rules and guidelines for the removal. Gonna talk about uh, being banned, I guess. Like, fuck this. So, uh, I got banned for spreading uh, 
medical misinformation, which I didn't do. I didn't get banned for my podcast. I got banned for one of the short clips I made called uh, Zombies Attack School Board Meetings. And it was exactly the same shit that was in my podcast. But for some reason, they didn't ban my podcast. They banned the short clip. And I went to Twitter, as I always do, and I bitched. And I told everybody to bitch at Team YouTube on Twitter. And uh, they said they would look into it. And then they said they did look into it. And they said, yeah, uh, you're still banned because you clearly spread medical misinformation, which I didn't. I was just banning. I was uh, just uh, debunking, debunking COVID misinformation. I sent them a, a big thing that said, hey, I did not spread medical misinformation. You guys are banning me. This is very dangerous. It's incredibly fucking dangerous for you guys to be banning people that are debunking COVID misinformation during a pandemic. Just crazy shit. And they said, update. We were able to carefully, we carefully reviewed it. Bullshit. No, you didn't because there was no medical misinformation in that video. We carefully reviewed it. And we determined that it did violate our guidelines. And uh, so fuck you, basically. And I was like, uh, can you tell me which part violated your rules? Like a timestamp? Because I do not believe you guys actually checked it. In fact, Dusty even goes on to say this later in the stream. This, this is censorship from the left. This is authoritarianism. This is coming from Silicon Valley, which is in bed with the... First off, I will say as somebody that just got suspended on YouTube, YouTube has every right to suspend anybody they want to. It is a private platform. They don't have to platform anybody they don't fucking want to. That's how the whole goddamn thing works. Now, yes, I think it is dangerous that they suspended me because I didn't break the rules and they have bots going around that aren't even fucking checking to see if you really broke the rules or not. And I will speak out against that. But if they do decide ultimately to ban me, that's their fucking right to do. It's a private company. Right? Basically confirming that he didn't actually have a problem with getting banned, but rather the reasons as to why he was banned. And if the two are spreading misinformation about it, then that is against YouTube's terms of service. They're not doing nothing wrong as you so snidely put it. Oh, but who determines what is misinformation? I hear you attempt to argue, and in which case, it's YouTube who does in this scenario. After all, it's their platform. I want to read directly what they say about COVID-19 misinformation, and they directly cite, and I quote, both international health organizations and local health authorities. Meaning if information is debunked by what those are saying, then it's misinformation according to YouTube themselves. Now look, I don't think Steven Crowder and Tim Pool are that great of YouTubers. I find their content for the most part very mediocre. But they have the right, the fucking right to speak their minds. And you don't have the right to say otherwise, you asshole. Not if it consistently breaks the terms of service, they don't. The irony of you complaining about getting strikes while advocating for others being deplatformed is the only thing I'm going to talk about here. And it's misrepresentative of what Dusty was actually advocating for in his podcast. He was directly pointing at double standards, not just advocating for it out of the blue. Neville, I'm really, really sorry about this. And it also fucking disgusts me in this video how much you use the term white supremacist. Now, I don't know the person you called white supremacist. But I know how much you slander others, so I don't buy for a second the person who called a white supremacist actually fucking is. I really don't buy it. So the person Blaze is referring to here, I think, is Jimmy Dore? Biden administration, this is authoritarianism coming from the left and it's being propped up uh, by half the left is for this kind of stuff. Any, any people who are vote blue no matter who are for definitely for censorship. Yeah, like I am definitely for censorship as white supremacist. I do not think the big tech companies should be platforming white supremacists. I know Jimmy doesn't have a problem with it because it doesn't affect him. Spreading racism, spreading hatred towards minorities has no effect on this rich motherfucker, this rich white piece of shit. So why should he care? It doesn't affect me either, but it affects other people. And so because I possess empathy, I don't want other people to be harmed, so I understand their positions and not wanting the shit platform. Pretty simple. But of course, when you're a piece of shit, if things don't affect you, eh, who cares, right? But if it is, then no. Dusty isn't strictly calling Jimmy a white supremacist. Racist, yeah, but not white supremacist. Instead, what Dusty alludes to here is that Jimmy had previously platformed white supremacists, which he apparently did do when he spoke with a member of the Boogaloo Boys, a group who might not 
be strictly white supremacist in nature certainly seems to have no qualm with associating with and platforming them, to which it garnered obvious criticism and controversy. Dusty goes on to talk about how Jimmy obviously wouldn't care about doing so, since he's white and racism like that wouldn't affect him personally, something Dusty shows a level of disagreement to. You have slandered people many times! Such as... Come on, man, this is basic shit. Give us examples. Also, you are not fighting against hate speech. And the fact that you think you are shows that you are deluded as fuck. If anything, you are spreading hate speech by slandering people and generalizing. Oh, and by the way, generalizing people is also something that needs to fucking stop right now. Still no examples, so we only have the word of someone who keeps misrepresenting arguments to listen to. Blaze, you've been a commentator for how long now? Shouldn't you know better? More on that later. What also has been bothering me lately are those videos called Me the Victims. I'm sorry, but those videos make you a legit scum. People getting sick is not fucking funny. It's a very serious issue. And people dying from COVID is not fucking funny. It's a serious issue. And the fact that you mock people who get COVID and die or endure from it? It's fucking unacceptable and I will not tolerate it! Oh, but Blaze, I thought it was their fault for catching it. Blah. Full disclaimer, like, I agree with the notion of it being a little scummy to profit off of those that catch COVID. I'm not saying Blaze is wrong. However, what I am saying is that when he's going to sit here and blame a woman for catching it and having it destroy her sense of taste and smell, then he has no right to get on Dusty's case for being disrespectful. Anyway, Blaze caps off the segment with talking down to Dusty because Dusty thinks Joe Rogan is a grifter and then talks about a Computing Forever video full of COVID conspiracies and misinformation that was taken off of YouTube, so... Considering what Dusty had to go through, I'm just gonna let Lying Dogs lay on that one. But with all that said, Blaze, what the fuck? It comes with a pretty heavy heart to say that this is easily the worst video I've seen from you, ever. You're so destructive and vindictive over what ultimately amounts to misunderstandings and uneducated ramblings about a topic you have shown here to really not understand nearly as well as maybe you think you do. From simple misinterpretations of one's stance on a subject matter like you did with Dusty and TJ, to something more egregious like whether or not racism still exists in America, shown in the Tetsubo segment. It's all just very knee-jerk and ignorant, and I can't say that had I not known better, I'd probably label you as either right-leaning a la Danny Corks, or such an enlightened centrist that you make Green Star seem nuanced by comparison. I get you enjoy your political discussions. I do understand, genuinely. And there is an audience for those who also engage in such a discourse. But without tact, without research, and when your video is this full of hypocrisy, it's... It's bad, okay? There's not really a better word to describe it. And I don't just want to rail on you so ham-festedly or as bluntly as I am, but I'm tired. This video has been very draining, and I'm not really sure where else to go with these final thoughts. Tell you to research, tell you to write a script, maybe at the least tell you to start showing your evidence on the screen better. I don't know. All are particularly good pieces of advice normally, and I guess might all be applicable here, minus maybe the script thing, because I'd like to assume that you already do write them. Whatever the case may be, I hope the wait was worth it, Blaze. I hope I was sufficiently able to answer your question. Have a good day, same goes for everyone watching, and take care. I must apologize for Skylar's tardiness with getting your problem solved. She sometimes has a tendency to trial and error things before she gets to fixing whatever she needs done. Sorry, we're keeping you from doing your own work. No problem. I tend to be a very organized person, as I should be. So I figured showing you three around was much higher on the priorities list. You know, since the boss is busy yet echoes of you. Yeah, well, thanks for that. In any case, it's no big deal. I'm not in any rush to get these things off. That is strange. You said you were from Sector E, right? Yeah. Why? Well, East Sector Uses tend to be incredibly determined people. You always want to keep an E around as they'll get the job done. Me? Determined? <laughs> nah. Well, I don't know, Elizabeth. You do have a history of coming back from rough spots. What do you mean? Well, think about everything you've gone through. 
How many people had either targeted you, turned their backs on you, how long you've dealt with being a controversial figure in your own dimension, how much people have accused you of things, and how you've come back time and time again after every low point to keep doing what it is you enjoy doing. Now, how would you know any of this? Well, ever since we met, I've been keeping track of you. We're almost like sisters, you and I, so I want to keep note of what you're going through. That's really sweet of you. They don't call her sugar for nothing. But yeah, by the sounds of things, you do seem to be rather determined to do whatever you're doing in life. Oh, we do commentaries, though I haven't much felt like doing fuck all since these shackles have been placed on me. Commentaries? Now's not exactly a time to explain. I'm getting tired. I'm going to sleep. Well, good night then. I hope she's okay. I'm sure she'll be fine. So what is it you guys do? Oh, Echo and I are resource gatherers. Echo down into the bites to find any output of materials I can. Then Echo runs off with that somewhere else, comes back with money and extra ship parts, whatever the boss wants at the time. You're all free to help while she fixes your bud's issue there. I would be willing to help, sure. <laughs>